if you are new to the channel then subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further notification okay student i welcome you all to this new lecture in advanced level where we are solving previous year iit je questions on sequence and series so today we will be solving question number 17 18 and then 9 okay then let's try to solve these questions okay if you see question number 17 if sk or k is up to 1 to 100 denotes the sum of the infinite gp whose first term is this one and the common difference is this one this is the first term they have given k minus 1 by k factorial and the common difference is 1 by k then you have asked to 100 factorial plus this summation series okay so before going to anything let's me calculate the sum of infinite gp so this is the sum of infinite gp formula sk is equal to a by 1 minus r so this was given as first term this was given as r so if you you can think k cannot be equal to 1 if k is 1 then this is undefined so what you will do for because here you need k equal to 1 also so we'll do it separately let us see first if we calculate it is coming 1 by k minus 1 factorial you can see it is k by k factorial k you can write is k into k minus 1 factorial 7 it is around this 7 by 7 factorial something so you can write it 7 into 6 factorial because 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 you can write it so 6 5 4 you have written 6 factorial so it is 1 by you can see it is k minus 1 factorial okay so if it is done so then they are asking you to find this one this into sk so you put sk there because sk you have just now you have got one by this one so it is square k square minus 3k plus 1 divided by this or k square minus 3k plus 1 you can factorize it uh, at k minus 1 and k minus 2 keeping minus 1 as outside because what i am doing so i am writing it k square minus 3k plus 2 k square minus 3k plus 2 then minus 1 So this one you can write k minus one into k minus. What is the advantage of this one? Using this you can, because here you cannot apply partial fraction, so you have to check how you can split it out. Because if I can do this one, then factors will be k minus one, k minus two, which can be easily cancelled with k minus one factorial like this one. So that's why I have gone for this one. So it is written k minus one into k minus two factorial and minus one is separated. So now you can write it this this by this and one is this by. If you go this by this, then k minus 1 k minus 1 it will be k minus 2 factorial then k minus 2 k minus 2 it will be k minus 3 factorial like this way. so one part will be k minus 3 factorial and one will be minus 1 by k minus 1 factorial now again you cannot put beyond 3 2 you cannot put so k cat should be greater than equal to 3 if you are putting this formula so what should i do for k equal to 1 and 2 because you need this one so for k equal to 1 and 2 i need this one so let me calculate it separately So for k equal to one, what is my first term? First term is k minus one by k factorial, which is zero. And what is r? R equal to one by k, that is one. So first term is zero, r is equal to one. That means all the terms are zero. So if we add the first term s one, what is the meaning of s one? Sum up to first term. So that will be obviously zero. All sum will be zero here because everything is zero. So we multiply it zero. So for k equal to one, this output will be zero. So that is zero. The summation output is coming zero. Forget about this one. This will come later. Now you have to go for k equal to two also. So for k equal to two, it is something of minus s two. If you put it two there in this expression, you put two, you will get it is minus s two. So let us calculate what is s two. What will be first term? Two minus one by two factorial half. What is r? That is also half. So what is the formula for s two? You have to use the formula for infinite GP because it is the sum of infinite GP. Don't use the formula for normal GP. Because I am taking two means it should be uh, formal uh, formula. No, it should not be because it should come from this. Because we are not able to, you can two you can put it here also because k one is not satisfying here. You can put two here. So if you put two, then it is one by two minus one factorial that is one. So your S two will be equal to one. So everywhere I am using that infinite GP sum formula because this denotes the sum of infinite GP. Don't confuse by S two S three. That is up to three times sum. So it should be formula for normal sum. No, they have specified you use the formula for infinite GP. That is the meaning of this one. You once you know S two is equal to one, you put it there. That means this summation will give you for k equal to two. This summation will give me one minus S two. That is minus one more. That is one. Okay. So if we are for zero, it is one. For one, it is one. For one, it is zero. For two, it is one. For three, four, five. We are using this one for next all terms because here it, you can see there is a minus sum. If you write it in summation of terms method, everything will get cancelled. So if it is three, then it is zero by two factorial four. This is 
you can write two three terms you can see this this get cancel this this get so first two terms left so here also last two terms will be left because all the first terms will get cancelled so this will not be get cancelled because there is nothing after two term it is repeating so this 1 by 90 should have come at k equal to 101 but you are not going at k equal to 101 so thing you are left with this and this so 1 and plus 1 this is also 1 this is also 1 and these two so here if you take LCM 98 factorial and 99 factorial LCM will be 99 factorial so here it will be 1 and here if you divide it 99 will be there so it is 100 by this 100 by 100 for, for, so for k is greater than equal to 2 so now you add all this for 0 it is 0 for 1 it is 1 uh, for 1 it is 0 for 2 it is 1 and for 3 onwards if you go for 3 onwards it is this much so this much 2 minus this then plus this because they have given this one also to include if you have for k is greater than 2 you will get this much and if you add this along with so you will get 2 only so ultimately you will get let me write it for it is 100 by 100 factorial plus for s equal to 1 it is 0 for s equal to 2 it is 1 for s equal to 3 it is 2 minus 100 by 100 factorial this is for 1 this is for 2 and this is for all values greater than 3 so ultimately you will get this, this cancel, you will get 3 as answer. It was integer type question. That means your answer should be between 0 to 9. So that is your answer. Now if you come to 18, let a1, a2, a3 and up to a11 be the real number satisfying these conditions. And you see this one. What is k minus 1, k minus 2 and k? They are 3 conjugative terms. So there is a relation between given these two. For k equal to 3 to 11 and uh, a square over a1 square a2 square these are all given summation in this much and the value of this much they are asking okay now this one you can see it is average this also also known as root mean square root you take something sort of root mean square root is not there square then mean so let me forget this all this you see this one this one is given to you what is the meaning of this one 2 into this one is equal to it is k minus 1 is here then k k minus 2, k minus 1, then it is k. This is the way we write series. k, k minus 1, k. So twice of this one is equal to this plus this. What is the meaning of this one? It is in AP. So let it is in AP of D is difference. And the first term is given 15 already. So it will be 15 plus R minus 1 into D in a term. So first term will be 15 here because these values are given to me. So I am putting all these values here. So it is 15, next one is 15 plus d, 15 plus 2d up to this one. This is given 90. So if you open it, how many 15 square you will get? 11 15 square because there are 11 terms. Because if you open it, you will get 2 into 30d, 2 into 2 into 2 into 15 into d into 2. So you will get 2 into 15 into 10 in d into 2. So everywhere you will get 30d, one term will be there. So first term 30d, it is only 1, zero. here it is nothing is there, 0. Here you will get 1. Here because it will be 60d, so if you take 32 common, it will be 2. The last one will be 15 into 2, that is 30 is coming from that, and this 10 will come here. Twice ab, that term. Plus b square. b square, you can get it here 0, here it is 1 square, then here it is 2 square, up to last one is 10 square. You know the summation formula for all these up to 10 terms, it is 10 into 11 by 2. And then it is also 10, 11, then 21 by 2. Everything is divided by 11, so 11 terms I got cancelled. It is 90. So if you solve it, you will get two terms of G. Which one you should take? If you take the first set, you will get A1 is this much, A2 is this much. But this formula has to be satisfied. 27 minus A2 should be greater than 0. So if you take 12, 12 into 2, 24, 27 minus 24 is greater than 0. So this can be. If you take this one, it is not greater less than 27 by 2. You will get much more. By. It is 13, 91, but it is getting more. It is getting around 94, 95. So that's why this is not possible. So only option this is possible. So D is minus 3, A is you got it already there. Now they are asking it is sum up to 11 terms. You can apply AP sum formula n by 2, 2A two plus n minus 1 into D. This one we have calculated D and D. Here they have already given. So you apply this one, your answer is 0. Next 19. If A1, A2, A3 up to A100 be in AP with A1 is equal to 3 and this is the sum of the series up to P. You can see. For any integer n up to 20 between 1 and 20, let m is equal to 5m, then sm divided by sn doesn't depend on n. If it doesn't depend on n, there is no term related to n there in this expression ratio, then what is the value of a2? 
So what is given? S M by S N. It doesn't depend on. This is the main thing they have given to us. We start from here. S M by S N. So you apply this formula. So this is the formula. Now they have also given m equal to five, five n. So I put it m equal to five n. Now they are asking because this is independent of n. Let me take it lambda. There should not be any n. N term should get cancelled. Okay, because the ratio is some constant, so let me take n. Lambda is that constant. You take product. You take n common from these n terms and rest terms. Because this, there should not be any n terms here. Only lambda should be there. So the coefficient of n should be zero. Then only n can vanish from this expression. Otherwise, how n will vanish? So for for vanishing n, so this should be equal to zero. So from here you can see d d get cancelled. Either d equal to zero or you get lambda equal to five. You can have also d equal to zero. If do d is equal to zero, then a one, a two, a three all will be same because the difference is same. So the first term becomes the second term. Second term becomes the third term because the first term is given three. So your a two can be three. So three is also one of the option. A two. So if it is a multiple correct, so you can apply a two is equal to three. And second one, if lambda equal to five, you put it there. Then you will find because this is zero already. We are thinking that there is no n term, so this is the term that you are getting with. So you put lambda equal to five, so you will get d equal to six. So if you get d equal to six, then first term is three, second term will be nine. So two answer is possible. One is three, one is nine. If you like the video, then press the like button and please give your valuable comments in the comment section.